Muslims and they were just like, hey, there's actually a picnic happening in the park and we'd love you guys to come. Apparently it's like a doctor's picnic, so this should be interesting um, since we're not doctors. <laughs> but we're invited. I'm a cardiologist in this area. I've been here about 20 years and uh, it was only I, supposed to be here for a year. <laughs> supposed to be. 20 years later, yeah, 20 here. years later we're still here. <laughs> well, I have a private practice, uh, internal medicine. Okay. And we have a uh, staff somewhere 16 to 20. Mm. I'm a doctor, but I'm kind of early retired doctor. You mm. know, like I sacrifice being a physician for mm. being a mom and a teacher. Mm. My husband, by the way, is a pulmonologist, a critical care doctor. Pulmonologist? He is, you know, like a frontliner. That's why he's not here today. Okay. Because he's taking care of the people in the hospital. Wow. Before coming to med school, I did one year of uh, Islamic studies and I learned a lot about Islam and I learned if you save one person's life, it's like you saved all of humanity. It's an opportunity to potentially save all of humanity with just one person, you know, even just one person. So I was working in a whole bunch of clinical research studies and so uh, you have to go in one and you introduce yourself to the patient. So uh, my first name was Muhammad. One of the patients just started asking me about my, like, the faith, about Islam. And uh, I remember her at the end of that interaction, she just said, this is what we see on TV uh, or here on the radio versus now I'm actually speaking to you in person. And she just said, God bless you because the way that you approached me as a patient, and she asked me what was your uh, inspiration, I just said, you know, I, this is just the upbringing of my parents. Like we, you're not just a patient, you're a human being. You know, having that appreciation from a patient's perspective also, it's a very big motivating factor. Everybody I've met here are doctors. Yes. What's, More what's... than 90% of the community. More than 90%, come on, yes. more than 90% yes. are doctors. What's yes. the secret? I think the doctors who come to United States uh, need to s serve an underdeveloped community and that way they are able to get their immigration. And so that attracts them, but the community keeps them. I am a hematologist, oncologist. Uh, You're a nephrologist. nephrologist. Doctor. My daughter is a cardiothoracic surgeon. So everybody is in the medical field, basically. Wow, yeah. wow. Last year, when they gave us our white coats, they wanted us to think about what the white coat meant to us. And I was remembering the prophet and his advice, which goes along the lines of, if you sit with the sick, you will find Allah with the sick. I thought that was beautiful. That's yeah. who I want to be. You know how my dad always used to say? What? Nice food. Nice people. With them. So who were the girls you were talking to? Um, they were so cute. One was 16, one was a ninth grader, and yeah, they were just talking about how as they were growing up, you know, they didn't feel represented in media and that burden of not feeling understood or seen in the world. You imagine that maybe you're unloved mm. or maybe that you're unlovable mm. or invisible or maybe even you're despised. Like I am the epitome of like <laughs> Midwestern, but people still look at me and they see terrorist just because I have family in Pakistan. They want me to go back to Pakistan, go back to Pakistan. Right. Like, I was, I'm, I was born in Kansas. <laughs> when I saw your video, I, it made me feel like I had somebody there. Like, it, I felt seen. Mm. Like, I'm not, I'm obviously not a hijabi, but I do understand, like, some of the, and I also am, like... Covered up or not? Yeah, that's my, that was my favorite, I was about to pull that up. That was my favorite line. <laughs> I loved that. That was the covered up or not, we all, that don't, was my... Don't ever take don't us ever, for granted. Yeah, I loved that line. That made me, like, giddy. I, I loved that line. Covered up or not, don't ever take us for granted. Our choices don't separate us, you know, we have a shared connection just by virtue of our faith. Yeah, and it made me feel like I felt bonded to every woman in that video. You know, whether or not she, she chooses to wear hijab, like, I wanted to say that, like, 
whether you cover or not, I still love you mm. and we're mm. sisters and the struggle and the burden and the difficulty and the joy and the celebration and mm. the devotion is still felt and shared. Lani's, Yazidis, Khadijis, Indonesians, Egyptians, Canadians, Algerians, Nigerians, Americans, Libyans, Tunisians, Palestinians, hidden beyond the Mekong and Laos, Senegalese, and Burkina Faso. Did you hear the story about the tornado? Yeah. On the day of the tornado, actually, this was the day we have our Sunday school graduation. Mm -hmm. And it was our first bake sale. So we were all gathered in the mosque. Okay. And we were having a picnic outside. The weather was so good. And everybody was playing, everybody was having fun. We had like bouncy houses and I was playing with my friend and then it started raining. And then we had a phone call from one of our friends. She said, you are all at the mosque? I said, yes. She said, go take a shelter, take a shelter now. There is severe weather in the area. All again, a tornado has touched down in southern Joplin. Everybody, if you are in southern Jasper or northern Newton, take yes, cover. Try to find a safe place. Right now, go take cover right now. And then, like, the adults kept, like, dragging the kids inside. There it is. It's on the I see it. I see it. It actually, like, just passed the masjid. So after a while, like, everything died down and we all came out. Okay, Paula, show one of those people need help. I heard him screaming, Chris! Kathleen, bring us down! Ah, the people! Yeah. There's somebody in here! So all our Muslim community were busy treating people. In the emergency room, it was like a war zone. You know, everybody's laying on the in a hallway, bleeding, I read and gushing out blood. 158 people died and over a thousand injuries. Yeah, yeah, is that? Yeah, that is true. We were in the ER, take care of the patient. Forgot about everything. Actually, I forgot about my properties. You oh know, gosh. like 15 families were affected by that tornado from our community. Yeah. We're kind of like. 22 families, so I'm saying 15, it's like everybody was right, affected. Right, right. I want to tell you something about the mosque. Please. So when this happened, everybody from the community donate food and uh, donate clothes. So it you was, were you know, sort of like a exactly. distribution yes. center? Yes, it's not just shelter. Muslim, it's for everybody. Whatever the people in field, while they're working there, they need it. The mosque helped them, sanitizer, uh, drinks, uh, water, it's whatever, because they cannot leave. Being here in Joplin after like the tornado, it's also kind of a responsibility for us mm. to give back from that level, from a medical point of view, but as, a, uh, as Muslims too, you know, that's the example of the Prophet. Every single person we met was more beautiful and had a even more beautiful story than the next. Mm. You know, every single person, like just such a such an inspiring story of survival and yeah. community yeah. and collaboration working together to build a, a more beautiful a more beautiful world.